morning, everyone. Welcome to chapel on this beautiful Tuesday morning here at Brooks, May 5th. Really, really glad to be with all of you in this live format and want to start by thanking Taylor Charpentier for making time and with us as part of our senior speech effort. I know we're going to learn a lot from what she has to share. I also want to take this moment to thank uh, Mr. Chapman for continuing to work with us on a weekly basis and share some thoughts of his own in an effort to hold community together. I've been deeply grateful uh, for that and equally uh, grateful to Mr. Dobbins and all of his technological wizardry and finding ways to uh, allow us to be in chapel with one another on a weekly basis. And then certainly the chapel prefects who have contributed, engaged, and stayed a part of that. So I can't tell you how great it is to be with you in a live way this morning, although I can't see most of you. And I hope you are all well, and I know we're going to enjoy uh, this experience together this morning. So with that, I will turn it over to Daniela Reyes. Our opening hymn is Seek Ye First. Mr. Humphreyville will play it on the chapel organ. The words will be on the screen. I invite you to sing along. First reading is a quote from Gray's Anatomy. I believe in the good. I believe that it's been a hell of a year, and I believe in the face of overwhelming evidence to the country. contrary, we will be we will all be okay. I believe a lot of things. The second reading is a quote taken from Howard Ferguson's book, The Edge, about athletics and self discipline. The duration of an athletic contest is only a few minutes, while the training for it may take many weeks of arduous work and continuous exercise of self-effort. The real value of sport is not the actual game played in the limelight of the applause, but the hours of dogged determination and self-discipline carried out alone, imposed and su supervised by an exacting conscience. The applause soon dies away, the prize is left behind, but the character you build up is yours forever. Good morning. Um, I woke up on a normal Sunday, Saturday morning. I put on my game day clothes, my black joggers, my Mike Ruzioni shirt, and my soccer pullover. I was the first one at team breakfast and had my game day meal. A toasted bagel with two bacon eggs on it made to order, a bowl of Cheerios with chocolate milk, and some melon. I took a nap on the old leather couch in the coffee house because I had first period free like every Saturday. I went to my anatomy class where we did blood typing, then to Apes where we worked on our final project. I ate lunch in the dining hall with Casey, Ashley, Carly, and Quinn. I went to the locker room for a game day for the last time as it was our semifinal game. I took a nap in my locker while Sydney took the couch. We did this just about every day. After my game, I was really okay, despite all the tears streaming down my face because I would never play hockey again. I 
Eleanor gave me a big hug as I left the locker room for the last time. Outside, Mr. Dongle gave me the best pep talk ever. I watched the girls' basketball team win an unbelievable game, and Taina sink the game-winning basket. When I left the gym, campus was empty, but the good kind of empty. The empty that wasn't lonely, the empty that was patiently awaiting the start of spring. Little did I know, this seemingly normal day of high school would be my last. Now, a regular day for me is nowhere close to what I thought my normal days would look like. Today, I woke up Tuesday morning. I ate breakfast. It's something different every day. I put on a different pair of sweatpants and a different t-shirt than those I slept in. To be honest, sometimes I don't. I do my schoolwork, log on to class, make a cup of tea. I don't usually leave my house until the afternoon. Now, when I leave my house, I enter a campus that's empty, but the lonely empty, the eerie empty, the feeling of being in a place that is supposed to be filled with laughter and love, but there's only the sound of silence. To put it frankly, this all sucks. But me, I am so lucky and thankful to be able to spend my afternoons on the campus we all call home. It has given me time to reflect and look back on my experiences here and realize what this place has made me into today. The loop my family usually takes on our walks brings us past the girls' varsity soccer field, on the side where the heads are. When I look out across the field, I can see freshman me, nervously awaiting the kickoff in my way-too-big jersey, about to go up against girls who were twice my size for the first time in my very first game. The air was sticky because it was still early September, but every once in a while, the breeze would come off the lake and rustle the leaves that were still a vibrant green. Then, I can see a late November day. My jersey fits me better, and my position has changed. The leaves that are still hanging on are orange and yellow, and the sun slowly begins to set over the glistening water. It's my senior day, and we are playing the same team I started my career against. I laugh at all the times I got knocked down here. Some days this spring, I will be in the middle of a run going along Main Street and past Mr. Packard's house. The red screen door that I've entered so many times never fails to catch my eye. I would usually open it excitedly right at 8.30 in the evening when his open house is started, kick off my shoes, sure to remember where I put them, and then make a beeline for the cookie dough. After filling one of those paper cups to the brim, I sit down on the middle couch in the front room watching whatever sport is on TV. I eat my cookie dough quickly, so my stomach settles before calzones, mac and cheese bites, and mozzarella sticks. It is here on the broken-in couch with my fuzzy socks, sitting cross-legged, that a random conversation starts up between a random group of people, and people I don't really know are making me die with laughter. The light glitters through the paneled brick windows on our evening walks. I can see myself, four years younger, standing on the grass outside in jean shorts and lots of lays around my neck, surrounded by a sea of Hawaiian shirts. I am so awkward. My hair is wet after a quick shower because I just got back from lacrosse practice, so I wasn't able to get ready with everyone else. I don't leave Maddie Abraham's or Casey's side the whole night just in case someone speaks to me. I don't know how to dance, so I just kind of bounce. Fast forward three years, and the colored lights are flashing through the frick glass. Still awkward, still can't dance, but wearing something a little more daring and right in the middle of the floor, jumping up and down as it slowly creaks to its demise, flowing hopelessly everywhere and with anyone, but always smiling. Coach Carey always says it's not about the wins and losses, it's about everything else that comes with it. The family you build, the lessons you learn, and the memories you make. It took me all my time here to really understand this. We won a single game this soccer season, but I won't be able to replace how I grew as a leader, the laughs I had, and the teary-eyed moments I'll never forget. Hockey season was different. We made it all the way to the semifinals. Despite the loss in that game, it was my favorite hockey team to be a part of, and I'm glad my final hockey season, after 16 years, was with them. The smiles my teammates put on my face are irreplaceable, and with every practice or game, they reminded me of what it is to be young and innocent, while still teaching them what I know, not about hockey, but about life. And actually, I never got to step on the lacrosse field this season. Ten years of playing with Casey, Allie, Maddie, Morgan, and Isabella 
With the fabulous addition of Madeline, Eliza, Annie, Molly, and Becca along the way, came to a stop before we even got to live out our last time on the field together. I thought all those years together were leading up to this one. I know I am very lucky to be here on campus, to be able to live in my memories in a time when that is greatly needed. But anyone, wherever you are, can simply close your eyes and find yourself on campus, because we all have those little things that Brooks taught us, and those will be with us forever, even when we aren't here. Thank you. Our closing hymn is the school hymn. thanking Taylor for that terrific talk. I hope that her talk encourages members of the class of 2020 to think about perhaps sharing some thoughts with us before the year ends. We'd all be better for that. So I, I hope we will think some more about that as we keep moving into May. Uh, I just want to say a quick thing, uh, two things about the subject of imagining, which I, like Taylor, have been doing a lot of here on campus without you here. And we should try to imagine the eruption of applause that would have been in Ashburn Chapel and all of us on our feet after her talk this morning, which certainly would have been a moment for all of us that we would have remembered. And in addition to that, the shine that Mr. Dobbins added for emphasis, but we would certainly have belted that out in our customary way. So 
I'll just say today that it's been great to be with you. I'm deeply grateful to Taylor for the, having the courage to lead this off. I hope there will be more. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. And I look forward to continuing to be in touch. Take good care.